Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, has arrived in the UK for the first ever meeting of European leaders, hosted by Sir Keir Starmer. Only his third visit to the UK since Russian President Vladimir Putin's full-scale invasion in February 2022, the Ukrainian leader landed in the UK on Thursday. During his trip to the UK, Mr. Zelensky is also scheduled to meet with King Charles. Boris Johnson claims that Donald Trump would assist Ukraine in a strong and decisive manner. According to former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, Donald Trump will be strong and decisive in defending democracy and in his support of Ukraine. This week, the former Prime Minister of the Conservative Party traveled to Washington to attend the Republican National Conference in Milwaukee, where Mr. Trump was officially announced as the party's nominee for the 2017 U.S. presidential elections. Days after the former president escaped an attempted murder at a rally in Pennsylvania, Mr. Johnson posted a picture of himself meeting with Mr. Trump following the circulation of a photo of him speaking to a mostly empty room at the conference on Tuesday. Zelensky implores friends to permit long-range attacks on Russia. Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, pleaded with friends to permit the use of Western weaponry in long-range strikes against Russia, specifically targeting military airfields. The more freedom we have, the more Russia will pursue peace, he declared during his speech to a British gathering of the European political community. He emphasized that there hasn't been any escalation as a result of the Allies' decision to permit such strikes, only along Russia's border after it established a new front in the Kharkiv region. Zelensky travels to the UK for a summit of European leaders. Volodymyr Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, is in Britain for a series of bilateral meetings with European nations. Zelensky arrived at the European political community on Thursday, where he will address leaders at Blenheim Palace in Oxfordshire. The leader of Ukraine released pictures taken at an airfield of himself and Valery Zeluznyi, the recently appointed ambassador of Kiev to London and the former commander of the Ukrainian Armed Forces. We will discuss future defense cooperation, expand our defense capabilities, and sign an intergovernmental agreement on support for the Ukrainian defense and industrial complex," Zelensky declared. Nobel laureates call on Belarus to free its political prisoners. Numerous Nobel laureates have pleaded with Belarus's autocratic leader to free more than a thousand political prisoners who were imprisoned for opposing his government. Svetlana Aleksevich, a writer from Belarus, was among the 58 Nobel laureates who signed an open letter pleading with Alexander Lukashenko to grant political amnesty to 1,400 persons incarcerated for their political activities. Many of those enduring terrible conditions were imprisoned when Mr. Lukashenko organized a bloody crackdown in 2020 to quell non-violent protests in the wake of an election that many felt was rigged. It is intolerable to put your nation's citizens through arduous trials and unforgiving circumstances just because of their beliefs. The letter to Mr. Lukashenko stated that each person has the right to express their opinions and should be respected for who they are. You possess a singular chance to erase the past and go down in history as a resolute leader who has demonstrated compassion and wisdom, accountable to your people and their future. In a recent agreement, Russia and Ukraine exchanged 95 prisoners of war each. Following discussions mediated by the United Arab Emirates, Ukraine and Russia executed one of their largest POW exchanges, totaling 190 individuals. On Wednesday, Ukrainian prisoners of war were seen being filmed into coaches at an unidentified location in Ukraine. Once inside, they were covered in national flags and heard singing, Glory to Ukraine! Glory to the heroes. The video footage, which was made public by the Human Rights Commission in Ukraine, also featured some troops having tearful phone conversations with their families, the first time they had spoken to loved ones since being taken prisoner. Another man was seen breaking down in tears and falling to the ground. Zelensky lands in the UK during Starmer's key European meeting. On the third day of the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Republicans shifted their attention to foreign policy, and J.D. Vance delivered his first significant speech as Donald Trump's running mate on Wednesday. Usha, the wife of Donald Trump Jr., introduced Vance before him. Wednesday's theme, Make America Strong Again, was announced amidst disagreements inside the administration on how to approach the conflict in Ukraine. 
A bill to give Ukraine more funds was just about passed earlier this year by House Speaker Mike Johnson, despite strong opposition from many Republicans. Other speakers included Texas Governor Greg Abbott, North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum, a leading candidate to be Trump's running mate, and former Trump advisor Peter Navarro, who was freed from prison on Wednesday after serving a four-month sentence for defying a congressional subpoena. Declaring, Biden has welcomed rapists, murderers, even terrorists into our country, Abbott addressed a gathering of guests, some of whom were holding banners that said, mass deportation now. Send them back was the slogan he then led the assembly in. Abbott promised that the buses will continue to roll until we finally secure our border, pointing out that he has repeatedly sent groups of aliens to sanctuary communities. Later, Burgum criticized the president under a different heading, saying, Biden is acting like a dictator at home. Newt Gingrich, the former Speaker of the House, and Representative Ronnie Jackson are also scheduled to speak at the event. Rep. Nancy Mace of South Carolina introduced herself to the audience on Wednesday night by saying, I'm Nancy, don't call me Pelosi, Mace. Congressman Matt Gates of Florida addressed the assembly on Wednesday in a succinct but forceful speech that specifically targeted Kamala Harris and other Democrats. To laughter and cheers, Gates remarked, appointing Kamala Harris to oversee the border is like appointing Bernie Madoff to oversee your retirement plan. Former Fox News host Kimberly Guilfoyle, who is engaged to Donald Trump Jr., claimed on stage that Biden's administration has made America more impoverished than anyone thought possible, and that Trump handed Biden a booming economy. Speaking with a message to the millions of illegal aliens that Joe Biden has released into our country in violation of federal law, was Tom Homan, the former Director of Immigration and Customs Enforcement ICE, under President Trump. You'd better get packing right away. You're absolutely correct. Republican convention speakers appear to be considering the prospect of Harris leading the Democrats' 2024 presidential ticket, given that some Democrats were pressuring Joe Biden to resign due to worries about the president's health and mental state after a damaging debate in early July. Regarding Vance's vice presidential candidacy, Gates reportedly remarked to the gathering, J.D. looks like a young Abraham Lincoln. Other than that, he attacked voter ID legislation and Trump's economic program during his speech. Trent Conaway, the mayor of East Palestine, Ohio, praised Trump for his visit to the scene of the freight train derailment and complimented the former president on his treatment of the locals. He was sincere in his presence, Conaway remarked. Regarding Joe Biden's management of the U.S. military's exit from Afghanistan and the conflict between Israel and Gaza, Republicans also lambasted him. A significant portion of the show was devoted to reliving Joe Biden's convoluted three-year U.S. military departure from Afghanistan, with special attention to the 13 soldiers who perished in an Islamic State terrorist strike at Kabul airport. The film started with the troops' families describing their lost loved ones and how they met Biden as their remains were being transported to a military base in Delaware. The families claimed that after Biden entered the stage to urge the public to remove him from office, he had not mentioned the names of the people who had died.